morning, and welcome to worship with the Institute of Lutheran Theology. I'm Dave Patterson. I'm the library director here at ILT. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to hear your word in law and gospel. Move our hearts so that we might be refreshed and filled with your word so that we might also go out to share that word to our neighbors and to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our gospel text for this morning comes from Matthew chapter 25, beginning with the 14th verse. For the kingdom of heaven will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. And then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went away and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But the, his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our Lord and Master is coming back, and he will call you to account. And if you are found wanting, you will be cast 
into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, every hellfire brimstone sermon I've ever heard says something like that, doesn't it? And it just makes you squirm. You know, we as Lutherans, we're not really comfortable with this hellfire brimstone stuff. We don't want to squirm. Our idea of God's wrath, of God's judgment, isn't hellfire and brimstone. It tends to be a little closer to cold coffee and stale donuts. We're just not comfortable with wrath. We talk about law and gospel, but deep down, if we're honest with ourselves, we're talking more law and gospel, right? We talk about the controlling power of the law, don't we? We talk about how it, it helps order society and makes it possible for us to, to live and to thrive. And that's wonderful, isn't it? And we talk about how the law drives us to the cross so that we might receive the good news and forgiveness of sins. What we don't want to talk about is how the law brings with it wrath. The wrath of God that gives the law its power. Think about it a minute. We have laws in our nation. You don't steal. You don't kill. You don't rape. You don't go and riot and destroy your town. These things are bad things, and it's against the law. But what happens when there is no calling to account, when there is no wrath in response to the violation of the law, chaos. Because the law without wrath ceases to be law at all. They just kind of become guidelines. Boy, we'd wish you wouldn't kill anybody. We wish you wouldn't rape anybody. Boy, we sure wish you wouldn't steal. Please don't. Please, please, please. There's not a lot of force there. That doesn't control society, does it? That sort of wishful thinking doesn't drive one to the cross, does it? Without wrath, there is no law. And the law is there to drive us to the cross. We must have law. And because we must have law, we must have judgment. And here in our gospel text for this morning, in this parable of the talents, we see God's judgment and wrath. He has called his servants to account. Now, when I'm reading one of Jesus' parables, I always like to look for the point that Jesus doesn't make. They always tend to be there. There's this obvious point that Jesus never talks about. And when you see it there, just staring you in the face, doesn't it make you wonder, well, why didn't he bring that up? You know? I actually want to go there, because if he didn't bring it up, maybe he's hoping someone will think about it. In this case, there is the servant nobody talks about. We see the servant who got five talents, and he went and traded with them, and he got five talents more. Successful servant. And that successful servant was rewarded. His master said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. 
I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And we hear about the servant who received two talents, who invested those two talents and received two talents more. A successful servant. And we hear the master's words, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. You will be given much. Enter into the joy of your master. And we hear about the faithless servant who was given one talent and buried it and gave his master back what was his. And he was cast into outer darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. But did you see the servant that wasn't talked about? The servant who received three talents. Jesus doesn't talk about him. The servant who received three talents, who, like the servant who received the five talents, and the servant who received the two talents, took and invested those talents. He was faithful. He sought to enrich his master just like the other two servants did, and yet he failed. He was an unsuccessful servant. So when the master came and called his servants to account, this other servant, the servant Jesus doesn't talk about, comes up and says, Master, you gave me three talents, and I invested them and I have nothing to give you. What do you think the master would have, what would you, he have said to this other servant? Have you ever thought about that? We have successful servants, and we have servants who don't try, but what about the servant who tries and fails? If you think about it, a lot of us sitting in our pews on Sunday morning saying, boy, yes, we should go out and we should proclaim the good news and we should do these things, but I don't think I'm any good at that. I'm just not sure what I'm going to do. I'm afraid to try because I might fail. And if I fail, what will our Lord say to me? There are three possible answers to that question of the forgotten servant, the unsuccessful servant. Either the Lord will say, you failed me, you unsuccessful servant, and now I will cast you into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth because you failed. That's one possibility. Second possibility is you bad servant. I cast you into outer darkness because where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth because you are not a good servant. If you were a good servant, you would have brought me my reward. But there's, there's a third answer. And this is the answer that we must all hear this day because the servant in the parable who was cast into outer darkness wasn't cast into outer darkness because he did not have a reward to give his master. It's because he didn't try. You see, the other two servants when they traded with their master's resources, their master's money, they risked it all, it all. They gambled it. They had no knowledge of whether it will succeed or not. There are thieves. There are people that will try to steal what is theirs. They had no way of knowing that they would be successful. They only tried. The outcome was not in their control. 
even that third servant who buried the money in the ground. The master said, well, you could have put that money on account with the bank. And I would have gotten my own with interest. But we know today that banks aren't all that reliable. And back then, there was no FDIC insuring that deposit. There was no guarantee that money put on account would yield anything. It could have been lost. The third servant failed because he didn't try. That's why he was rejected. But of these three servants, that is the only servant that obeyed the law. That was not their money. That was their master's money. And by the letter of the law, they were responsible for preserving it. And the other two risked it. They gambled it. And they could have lost it all. It just so happened that they didn't. That third servant, though, he was afraid. He knew his master was stern. He knew his master gathered where he had not sown. So he preserved what his master had given him. He protected it. It was entrusted to him, and he protected it. He kept his obligation under the law, and for that, he was cast into outer darkness. And there's our answer about the unsuccessful servant. There's the answer that G Jesus wants us to get to, and he does it by not talking about it at all. He would have said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Welcome into the glory, into the joy of your master. Why? Because that third, that unspoken servant, the servant who received three talents, who failed, the unsuccessful servant, still acted out of love. Still acted out of faith. What was the reason that the master rewarded the other two servants? It was not their success. It was not their goodness. It was their faithfulness. In other words, they were welcomed into the joy of their master because they were full of faith. Their faith in their master freed them to act in love. Whereas the third servant had no faith. He was faithless and acted only out of fear. He was acting under the law. And the law only brings wrath. The law is important. Wrath is important. But it's important because it drives us to the cross. It tells us that we can't do it. All we can try to do is hold on for fear that we will lose it all. But when you just hold on for fear of losing it all, you will lose it all because our master demands more than we could ever possibly give. Judgment is coming. Our Lord and Master is returning soon. And when he returns, he will call you 
to account. Not for your success. Not for your goodness. Not for your lawfulness. But for your faithfulness. And that faith is a gift. He entrusts us with a gift, the gift of faith. And when he returns and he looks upon you, successful, unsuccessful, good, bad, doesn't matter. What matters is that you are full of faith. And when he sees you, he will look upon you and he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Welcome into the joy of your master. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you desire not the death of the sinner, but that all would repent and live. Hear our prayers for those outside of your church. Empty them of their iniquity and fill them with your faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, whose nature it is always to have mercy, visit with your fatherly correction all who have erred and gone astray from the truth of your holy word and bring them to a true sense of their error that they may again receive and hold fast your unchangeable truth. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, fount of all wisdom, by your Holy Spirit, enlighten those who teach and who learn here at the Institute of Lutheran Theology, that, rejoicing in the knowledge of your truth, they may worship you and serve you from generation to generation. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you for joining us in our chapel service. We are glad to bring you the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You may leave prayer requests in the comments below. They will be included in an upcoming chapel service. Please visit our website, ilt.org, to find more materials for use in your congregation and in your home. Once again, thank you for your participation.